Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Uh, today we are going to have a look at the daily build for Ubuntu 18.04, the Bionic Beaver. Aha, that just sounds like an awesome name. Um, so, of course, I've been critical of, of Ubuntu uh, in the past. I thought 17, like 17.10 particularly was just crap. Uh, I've never gotten it to run very well. I try to give it my best. I've uh, not been a huge fan of the GNOME switchover. Uh, but what I do want to do here is talk about 1804 as it's coming out. I have this on a virtual box, and it is uh, remarkably stable and kind of back to that Ubuntu that I was used to. Um, I still do wish it had Unity, and I believe you can still put Unity on it if you wanted to. Um, but uh, it'll be kind of interesting to uh, to go back, look into that, and uh, I just want to walk about, you know, walk through uh, some of the changes. And I did find an a um, uh, an excellent article here. We're going to go through just with the initial changes right up front. Um, and so in this, we'll have the feature releases. What are some of the, the updates? And I'm going to actually boot into the distro and show you the distro itself. Um, so, uh, and I think that, that they addressed a lot of the problems with the 1704 and the 1710 branch in fixing this. I really think they did a great job. They learned from their mistakes and they bounced back with a rock solid distro once again. And I'm kind of pleased about that. Um, will I use it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm still not a big fan of GNOME, uh, and so that's probably going to be my holdout unless I want to do um, something like put a, put Unity back on it or whatever. Uh, but this is the next long-term release, five years of support, um, and we are right now, I think we are after the Alpha 2 release. I don't believe the first beta release is out yet. So as of March 1st, there will be the feature freeze. So no new features are going to be released. So the development team has some time. Um, Mar uh, March 8th. So about 70 days later is when the first beta is going to be uh, released. And so if you are running uh, 1710, you can enable in the software settings uh, the, a tick box to upgrade to the beta when it is out. Um, and I will try and remember to show you how to do that. Of course, I'm working on the daily build, which is the very daily, uh, daily updates to it. Um, the user interface freeze will uh, occur March 22nd, uh, documentation freeze 29th, and then final beta release April 5th, uh, uh, final freeze April 19th, and then 26th, April, April 25th, 6th is the final release of Ubuntu. So the new features, color emojis, yay! I personally don't care, but for those that use emojis, this is a big deal because Ubuntu used to use uh, just black and white. Uh, if you do happen to use emojis, now you have this. Uh, and I, this might actually have something more to do with the, the GNOME integration because I believe GNOME uses those. I, I just, I don't use emojis other than every now and again, you know, I might show some of my favorite finger on a text message on my phone. No, I don't do that. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of emojis, but for those that do like emojis, you are going to get a big, uh, jump in emojis on the system. Of course, we have the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, this is the part that I'm not a fan of, uh, but it does, uh, they did do some improvements to the look and the style of it to to make it a better uh, a better desktop. It is customized GNOME, and uh, they did an excellent job of customizing this. And it's to the point to where I'm not sure I'd hate it quite as much, um, but we'll see. Uh, it certainly is just as customizable as Unity is. I mean, I can say that. Um, but uh, and I like it. I like what they've done with it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that when we get into there. Um, the desktop is going to have a new theme. Some people might be saying finally about this. I always kind of like the old uh, the old Ubuntu theming, but uh, we do have the new theme options. I'm not sure if my daily build has this built in or not. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> we'll have a look. Uh, you can actually add that if you're on a 17 or 18 branch as well. Um, faster boot speed. That is one of the things I've, I've noticed just booting up the daily build. It does boot very fast and it is going back to Xorg as the default instead of Wayland. I know a lot of people are like, Wayland's here. It's so good. No, the problem is Wayland is still too broken. Um, that was one of the downsides with eight, with, uh, 1710 Wayland by default caused a lot of hassles, 
uh, for a lot of people. And so uh, going to going back to Xorg uh, as a default is excellent. However, both of them are still there. If you're a Wayland guy, you got the option. I'll try and remember how to show you uh, to show you how to do that. Uh, lots of improvements and bug fixes. I have found that this seems to me, and I haven't run it on a regular system, um, but I was actually running Ubuntu 16.04 pre-alpha in a production environment. No problems. This build seems that rock solid to me. I have not gotten any of the, the issues. I haven't had any bugs, crashes. I have not noticed anything, and we're just on a, uh, on a pre-beta, um, a pre-beta, uh, you know, daily build, and it's rock solid. Uh, so this is very nice. We do have a, a new to-do list option set in. There's also a um, um, a remote desktop application uh, built into there as well. Of course, it does collect data on your system. Um, I have a video about that. I am not a fan of this. I do wish that uh, it was an opt-in, not an opt-out. Um, also, though, I looked at the into PopCon, and PopCon is installed by default, and you do not have the option, at least in the daily build. It is not reporting data by default. That is a, dis uh, a, a very important distinction. It is installed. It is not sending data out by default. Um, and so that is one of the uh, the things. App uh, the app port, however, the uh, the reporter by default it does want to send that out. It will still send you the box. It's just that the checkbox is enabled by default. And I think that's actually how it was in 17 as well. I don't remember. Um, so you can actually download the um, download the image here. I think it's like 1.3 gig something. Um, and uh, so what I did is I downloaded the uh, downloaded the daily build. I have this installed, and then I didn't touch it after that. And I'm back with a kitty. All right. Um, so here we are installed in. It literally takes less than I'd say less than 30 seconds to get this system booted up. And so now we are booted up, and uh, we are in our new desktop. So let's go ahead and first double check that theme. See if that new theme is installed. So we still have the old theme. Um, uh, on this as of right now. Uh, not sure when that's going to be ported over to this or who knows, maybe it's here and I can change it. Um, I do still kind of like this theme, but I fully support them changing it. It is, it is by this time getting old. I do like how when you push up to the side or to the middle, you'll see how you get the, the, uh, it's going to darken your, uh, your theme around that to indicate when it's going to, uh, kind of be a full screen. So it does keep your color consistency uh, more with how your uh, uh, how your windows are attached, so you can see that. Come over here, you'll see that if the window is touching the side, it's kind of darker. Uh, just a, a neat little eye candy type thing. Uh, you'll see that you do have icons on your desktop by default, um, and I believe in the settings you can go ahead and um, uh, enable more items on your desktop. This is. I think always has been the default. We do have the software center. Let's go ahead and start with the applications installed. So in our menu, um, nothing is really changed here from the typical Ubuntu's of the past. Um, all of our software is much the same. We have some games. We still have our Amazon store uh, by default. And the two things that are different that I can recall are the to-do checklist over here is one of the applications. So this just gives you a uh, checklist of things to do, and um, it does look like our, well, our meta key worked, but it was, oh, hold on, the kitty's trying to search for plus. <laughs> okay, the other, uh, the other new software package I never recall seeing before is the, uh, is, uh, the Remina, which I believe is a remote desktop client. Uh, so you have this information, you can, you know, allow anonymous usage stats to developers. That's an option in there. Um, we do have a help document over here. Everything else is much the same. Let's have a look at what version of Firefox we are looking at here. Um, load Firefox, there you go. Okay. So 5701 is our Firefox version installed by default. 
There's that remote desktop. I was going to go ahead and quit that. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, the next thing is I had said that you can, uh, if you are already running your uh, running Ubuntu and maybe you just have a testing machine, uh, you want to enable the ability to test the beta when it comes out. Um, you want to come into here uh, under your updates menu. So software and updates, find your updates menu. And then over here, notify you for any new version, long-term support versions or never. I want to change this for any new version. That should enable you to update the beta from the GUI. Um, here is this. Uh, we do have the additional drivers uh, system. So it will probably find uh, a couple things. So... Uh, there's your guest editions, which seem to be working perfectly fine out of the box. And so it actually is identifying two different, um, two different guest editions. Um, and so that's actually working just fine. Here's, okay, so here's developer options. Uh, use proposed updates if you're willing to report bugs or any. So you do have the option here to turn this on and look at the proposed changes as well. Uh, in which case definitely report back the data uh, during the development phase. But that's actually how you can do that. Let's go and have a look at our settings as well, in case you're kind of new to this. Um, there's no Wi-Fi adapter found. There is no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on this particular computer. Our backgrounds, we have basic GNOME backgrounds with the exception of just simply two Ubuntu backgrounds, one of the orange and one of the silver. Uh, and of course, this is probably going to be one of the things that changes because this is still the uh, uh, the previous one. I can tell because it's an aardvark. All right. Um, so here's your dock. Of course, uh, this is your default size. You can make it larger if you want it larger. You can make it tiny if you like it tiny. You can auto hide the dock. That is disabled by default. And you can put it on the left, the right, or the bottom of the screen. So depending on where you like this type of stuff, you can go ahead and do that. I might actually do something like a right side. That's what I generally do these days. Or who knows? Maybe I'll just leave it on the left in the spirit of unity. Here's your notifications. Um, so you can see everything is notified you know, by default. Uh, no big deal there. Nothing secret. Uh, under your search bar, again, everything here is my default. When you do a search, it will search all the various locations. You can turn on or off those. Is your online accounts privacy here's your default screen lock is on location is off usage is on um, purge trash and temporary files is off report problem uh, problem reporting automatic this is the one that I think that uh, one of those ones that some people might like I'm not a huge fan of this if I see the same problem reported over and over I might intentionally check it but I'd want to actually turn that off because I don't like my computers checking back home period okay I just don't want that and I think a lot of people in the Linux community are agreeing with that there are obviously people who disagree with me on that but I moved to the Linux world for privacy there are way too many things that collect way too much data I've just swing the pendulum the other way and I don't want any data sent out unless I intentionally send it. Uh, and so that is um, that. Is that. Uh, there's screen sharing, sound. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Okay, devices, I think. i got to remember where my... Uh, remember where your desktop buttons are. You might actually have to install the GNOME tweak tool. Sometimes that was breaking um, uh, at least when the Unity or uh, when uh, GNOME first entered Ubuntu uh, again re-entered Ubuntu that was giving us problems. So it looks like um, it looks like I, I might need to install that tweak tool if I want to put other desktop icons on the desktop. Let's see if the tweak tool is installed by default. It is not. So let's go ahead and install that. Um, see what I can install as far as tweak tools. So here's your software installer. Um, this one here, uh, it looks like it's um, not the GNOME software installer, or at least it looks significantly different, and it's certainly running a lot faster. You do have Skype, you have Spotify. So a lot of these applications that... Uh, a lot of the applications that a lot of people are used to in this day and age are available in here by default, so that is actually quite awesome. 
I am not finding any tweaks. Okay, there we go. Gnome tweaks, Unity tweak tools. Let's go with the Gnome tweak tools. Let's go ahead and install that. It's going to want our password, which is simply test for me right now. It's like it is the Gnome Software Center. No, don't remove, don't remove. Launch, <laughs> wrong button. All right, so here we have our um, GNOME tweak tool, animations on, so yeah, definitely still using the old theme. Here's your desktop, so we can turn on our um, notifications there. Now, as I said, um, I'm not sure if they fixed some of these, but some of the things in your tweak tool um, will mess up. It used to mess up Ubuntu when GNOME first came back onto it in the 17 branch. I don't know if any of that is fixed. I know I, I did brick one uh, <laughs> Ubuntu install that way. Uh, so just uh, be warned if you're installing your tweak tool that something in here might uh, might break something. But uh, it seems seems okay. So it looks like the theme is not in yet. We do have now our desktop icons uh, put back onto the desktop, so that's nice. We can put a new folder. I don't know if there if I can actually put anything else in uh, uh, in the desktop or not. Let's uh, let's go ahead and try something. We're gonna boot up LibreOffice. Let's have a version. Look at what uh, version LibreOffice we have. So 5.4 is our LibreOffice version. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, save a copy of this in the templates folder. And I'm going to call this writer document, save, close. Now when I uh, go to my right-click my menu, now I can right-click and create a new writer document. And that'll create that document. So all that stuff still works uh, wonderfully. Um, can I trash something or not? There it goes. I <laughs> hope the trash can works. Yes, it does. It is working. All right. So... Um, Let's see, let's go ahead and remove that from your favorites. Let's remove that from your favorites. We're just going to customize some things here, see how to customize stuff. So let's go ahead and do right-click, add to favorites. So right-clicking and adding the favorites will give you the icon right there on the desktop. Let me see our system monitor. Let me also double-check the system resources being used. So the entire system right now is running on 1.3 gigabytes of RAM. So that's actually not too bad. It is a little bit heavier. Um, of course, the, the GNOME desktop is slightly heavier than some of the other ones. So if you are running this with very little RAM, this may not be the desktop for you, but uh, it's going to be okay otherwise. You'll see it's, it's running pretty smooth. It is snappy. It's very nice. I'm getting the feel. I'm, I'm getting that strong feel of Ubuntu again as far as... Uh, this feels like a good stable system. Uh, the next thing I said I was going to show you is how do you, if you really do want to run Wayland, how do you do that? Well, you want to come in and you want to select your person and log out. And then when you are logged out, then on your login screen here, um, let's see, let's click on this, click on your settings gear, and then click on Ubuntu on Wayland. That is how you can set your account, and it should save your previous system. So you generally would have to do that one time, and then that will save our boot up onto the Wayland system. So let's see if uh, there's anything different here on Wayland. Um, definitely I'm getting a different icon theme I'm seeing. You'll see your your um, software center has actually changed a little bit. So it looks like that's one of the things I'm seeing different. Um, it does seem to be a whole lot slower. 
It's not nearly as snappy on Wayland, for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and load up the system resources again. See if it's using more RAM or something. Not using a significant amount more RAM, slightly more. I'm at 1.4 instead of 1.3. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely... Let's just move around a window, see what that does. Let's see. Move around a window, just jumped the CPU. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, Xorg again and see see what that did, just moving that window around, just kind of wiggling around a little bit there. Let's go ahead and log out. Let's go back into... Um, go back into the uh, XORG. Can you close? Thank you. Okay, log out, log out. Go back here. You can see how fast it is uh, logging in and out of the system, so that's actually really nice. So yeah, this just way snappier. System monitor. Bring that back down to about the same size it was. Wiggle this around. And you'll see that does not nearly impact the processor as much as, as it did on Wayland. So if you are looking for a snappier experience, definitely stay on the XORG unless you have a very specific reason to go on to Wayland. Um, so, and of course you'll see the icon theme is slightly different there. All right, so that is Ubuntu. Oh, I guess the next thing, let's go ahead and show you the uh, popularity contest. Let me show you what that's doing and, and what to look for. I'm gonna hold Control, Alt, and T, boot up a terminal, push F11 to maximize it. So if you wanna know if popularity contest, that's the thing that collects app usage. If you wanna know if it's installed on your system, you wanna go to your Etsy folder. And then uh, what you're looking for in the Etsy folder is the popularitycontest.config file. So that's this one here that I've highlighted. So I'm going to show you that file. Um, so booting this in, this is what the default is. So when you're actually running the system here, then you have... This is your host ID. Now, this is the thing that will cause some people some, some concern. And understand, it has to do with system fingerprinting and the fact that some people in some lines of work need to keep better anonymous systems. This is unique to everybody's machine. And it can tie you back to, was your system online? Did results come in? Um, what IP did that get reported from? Now, I'll tell you that the IP addresses clear out after a week, but they still does collect the IP address. Um, this is the thing that will cause some people some, some disconcernment about this. And this, this application popularity contest is a Debian um, uh, application, but it's not installed by default. It is something that if you are a person that wants to help, in, you know, help, determine which packages are most being used and you don't have any quibbles about that, you can install the package. The fact that it is installed by default is going to be disconcerting for some people in this build. Now you will set participate no. What this means is this is not actually going to be setting uh, data and you can actually check that by looking at the crons. Uh, so you'll see the cron hourly. What what this will do is it will do the cron weekly. It should appear in the cron weekly list. So let's go ahead and go into our cron weekly uh, directory. Um, and you will not see the item here sending out that data. So that is kind of your, um, your, your issue. So if you are absolutely paranoid about the data collection and you do not want that running, then you want to come in here and sudo apt remove um, popularity contest. That's what you're going to want to do if you're super paranoid about the data collection stuff. Just completely remove the, the, the application. It is 
installed by default it is not enabled by default some people are going to have a problem with that so I just want to point that out as well that is one of the applications uh, that is doing that data collection and what that does is it will take a list of the applications you have in your computer in order of when it was installed and when it was last used in kind of reverse order and report that to the Ubuntu servers uh, once a week on a cron job and so that is, uh, that is what that application does. That's only one of the three things that Ubuntu uses to collect data. The other is app port, uh, which is a thing we have disabled earlier. And the other is in the installer, which I can't show you. It's actually not on the daily build installer yet. Um, but for those people that are concerned, and I still think it's a bad idea for Ubuntu to go down that road, how they're going down it. Um, it should be an opt-in, not an opt-out. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sticking by that because people, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people use Linux for the privacy aspect. And in this crazy world where there's too much data collection, we need options to, to uh, not collect the data. It is rather harmless data at this point in time, um, and you do have the option to opt out. But still, I wish it was either not there or purely opt-in. Um, and I, and I would receive it a little bit better. So that is Ubuntu. This is, again, the Bionic Beaver daily build. It is seems as though we have a rock-solid uh, system once again. And uh, for that, I'm very pleased. And I think when the beta comes out, um, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, give it a try for a little bit and see what I think. So that's... Uh, that's my video for today. Thanks for watching. Again, if you'd like to help support what we're doing, you can check out switch2linux.com forward slash support. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.